four minutes. And we will start. Okay, so let us start. Should be? Yes, sir. We can start. Okay, so I gave you an idea about uh, sprinklers and sprinkler irrigation background. Can you see the slides? Yes, sir. So we were discussing about. I gave you an idea about this sprinkler here. You can see two nozzles, how it is broken, this jet into droplets, trajectory angle. So this you have already seen, right? And then some arrangement, reverses, booster pump, take-up valve, filters, etc. So these are the accessories. Now the important question is design how to design, what is important aspect there, so that uniformity, we are trying to find out an uniform irrigation system, which applies water in terms of equal amount or equal depth everywhere in the field, right? And without minimum losses. So irrigation efficiency is maximum, uniformity is maximum and Efficiency is maximum. So it's basically the idea design of a sprinkler irrigation system. If we need to design or we are asked to design how we can initiate, we need to first find out the condition or we can say inventory of the resources. So first aspect there is obtaining information about available land, how much area we need to irrigate, what is the water source, water availability and what equipments we have. Then which kind of topographic condition it is? It is flat system or it is rolling or what is topographic map of the area? What is the type of soil? Reason being we need to design accordingly the infiltration characteristics we are using to find out what could be the application rate. Source of water, whether it's uh, surface water, ground water, or flowing water like a river or in any channel, 
so source of water what is the quality of water whether it is fresh water brackish water and so on and its availability during the entire year reason being we are targeting to irrigate the field at a certain season or maybe because of crop it is round the year so we need to need to find out what is the availability during the entire year what is the amount of sediment in water what is soil particle concentration that may go into the system so we are using the previous condition the viscous filtration sand filtration or anything which is coming along with water we need to remove to have a clean and efficient system then type of sprinkler equipment available and their specifications whether the available sprinkler is suitable for our purpose need or not we need to find out in the market what are the specifications available in the market then identification of power source suitable power source because this is a pressurized irrigation system we are applying water if you recall minimum 0.5 that is very nominal to as high as 10 kg per centimeter square pressure is required to operate this system the sprinkler system of irrigation we need to have power whether it is engine diesel engine may be or electric motor we are going to use or solar power it is available so we need to find out in terms of availability of source of power now once we have inventory of the resources we can go for design in terms of size of the system so one by one first uh, quantity of water to be applied how much amount first what we are looking we need to find out the depth of irrigation that is applied to the crop in individual irrigation so quantity of water to be applied how we are getting we are if you recall we have already learned depth of irrigation we are simply trying to find out with respect to field capacity and current moisture content or building point generally it is given because it's a minimum and if it is in percentage divided by 100 multiplied by apparent specific gravity and root zone depth same unit whatever it is it will give here however this building point that is the total water requirement this this is the difference that shows the total water available however crop cannot give you good return when this is the case so we are having something in between when to apply so to find out how much water to apply we also take into consideration when to apply so we are simply taking an allowed stress suppose 50% of this available water is used by the crop and then we need to apply so we are simply man using management allowable deficit condition here to multiply suppose a value here to find out what fraction of this available water we are irrigating so depth of or you can have this is one method second you have already learned that it's based on etc evapotranspiration that is accumulated loss of water from the field in n number of days so we are simply calculating etc and recording in a book to find out when it is time to irrigate exactly whenever it is reach, reaching to a certain soil moisture depth condition so quantity of water to be applied that depends upon the crop what type of crop it is what is the climate whether it's a dry weather or dry climate or it is humid whatever it is so based on crop climate soil type of soil methods of scheduling of irrigation what we have already discussed in water requirement condition we are simply first finding out how much depth of water need to be 
applied that is quantity of water to be applied as irrigation the proposed crop their water requirement along with the water holding capacity of the soil should be known so we need to find out these information first as an inventory to decide or design the irrigation system and specifically here we are talking about sprinkler irrigation system second is the capacity of the system how much this is the depth of water that is required now simply we need to find out what capacity of the system we need to have capacity means what application capacity of the system we need to have so this is the simple idea here in this particular we are finding out the depth of irrigation that is required in unit field maybe and second here it's once it's a matter of capacity to decide about the system we need to first find out how much is the total area right what is the frequency of irrigation or irrigation interval because in one day we cannot irrigate this whole area so we are dividing in number of parts and how much time it takes to irrigate this whole area because the same system it is applying water to all the fields here that is divided in number of parts so irrigation interval is important means after how many days this field again will require irrigation because we are moving suppose in this day so once it is reaching to finish this area then only this area should require the second irrigation time so we need to find out total quantity or total capacity of this system which is supplying water in n number of days so capacity of the system simply in that way depends upon the area to be irrigated this is the whole area we can say a the depth of water to be applied that is d in each irrigation because first irrigation d second we are assuming that the same irrigation d will be allowed and time allowed to apply this water how many days this is the matter of your irrigation interval time allowed to apply this water means in one day in two day or how many days and the application efficiency what is application efficiency reason being net water requirement is d but suppose we are applying even by sprinkler irrigation there are certain losses so what is the efficiency this is net depth of water that is required so grass what grass depth of water simply it will be more than this so it is simply d divided by efficiency of the system now this is the quantity of sprinkler irrigation a is the area d is the depth of application f is simply the irrigation interval in days suppose 10 days interval we are coming back here again so in 10 days how much water it is going to apply and every day it is applying a for a certain period of time like 10 hours 12 hours 20 hours and e is the efficiency so in this way if you are simplifying to find out this capacity of the pump in liters per second this is the multiplier can you do that or should i show you a is in hectare so automatically it should be a divided by 10 to the power 4 to make this system let me find out this value for you to have an idea in square meter now d is centimeter in centimeter so it must have 10 to the power minus 2 to make the meter now this is the area now area and depth that makes the volume that is in cubic meter and cubic meter our target is to make the system in liters per second so let us make this unit in liters how much 10 to the power 10 to the power 3 per cubic meter water is equal to 1000 liters so this makes in liters now this is the operation 
सपोज एच आर दैट इज आवर्स ऑफ ऑपरेशन आवर्स ऑफ ऑपरेशन वी आर ट्राइंग टू फाइंड आउट इन सेकेंड सो आवर्स थर्टी सिक्स हंड्रेड सेकेंड एंड दैट थर्टी सिक्स हंड्रेड मीन्स आवर्स वी आर कन्वर्टिंग इन टू सेकेंड थर्टी सिक्स हंड्रेड एंड इज सिंपली एफिशियंसी एंड एफ इज इक्वल टू इरीगेशन इंटरवल इन डेज सो इन डेज इट इज ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स फाइव डेज डे इंटू ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स इंटू आवर्स थर्टी सिक्स हंड्रेड अगेन यू आर मल्टीप्लाइंग सो इफ यू आर सॉल्विंग दिस यू विल फाइंड आउट ट्वेंटी सेवन पॉइंट एट ए डी डिवाइडेड बाई एफ दैट इज इंटरवल टाइम एच आर एंड ई दैट इज इफिशियंसी वी नीड नॉट टू डू दिस एंड दिस विल गिव यू एन आइडिया द पंप कैपेसिटी इन लीटर्स पर सेकेंड दैट इज कैपेसिटी ऑफ द सिस्टम मीन्स दिस मच अमाउंट दिस इज नॉट सॉरी दिस इज नॉट पंप कैपेसिटी बट दिस इज द इरीगेशन आर स्प्रिंकलर इरीगेशन सिस्टम कैपेसिटी दिस मच अमाउंट इट विल डिलीवर in per second so liters per second amount of water it will deliver that is capacity of the system first you have taken inventory requirement availability then you decided about the depth of application then you decided the capacity of the system with efficiency remember it then application rate generally we are deciding what application rate it's not matter of this is depth d amount of water you can apply in one hour even but it has no use if soil is not uh, means uh, allowing this water to get in filter into the soil so we need to decide what capacity of the system should be there so that there is least loss of run off water from the applied water so it's basically application rate we are deciding that refined again how many hours system will run in this way application rate we are taking as an standard first and then around these values and conditions we are fixing the amount that must be applied per unit time so application rate that is limited by the infiltration capacity of the soil means if it is more it will generate run up especially infiltration capacity depends on soil type so soil is important aspect crop cover that is again important cover important aspect slope need to be taken into consideration in deciding application rate if we are not taking care about these soil crop and slope of the field there will be unnecessary loss of water maybe through run off condition from the field so these are the suggested maximum application rates in centimeter per hour it depends on which type of soil so we can find out what is the nearest site type of the soil in our area then we need to decide application rate in terms of centimeter per hour with respect to slope condition of the field and soil condition so suppose it's a 0.5% slope and for an example coarse sand soil of 2 meter depth we need to have very high application rate reason being it has a high infiltration rate as well so application rate should be as high as 5.1 cm per hour but suppose slope has increased we need to reduce it otherwise even it is coarse sand soil it will generate run off if slope is more further increase slope we have to reduce it and now the extreme another condition that is heavy textured clay or clay loam soil even 0.5% slope we have very low rate of application 0.38 reason being infiltration is very low with respect to coarse sand condition and if it is high slope it is further decreased to as low as 0.2 cm per hour so this is general guideline to decide what kind of applic or what rate of application it should be depending on the soil 
and slope characteristics in the field. Now, once you have the total capacity of the system, you have decided or uh, estimated the depth of application. You are near about to fix the application rate of a sprinkler irrigation system. Then we need to select a particular sprinkler which can apply a certain amount of water in unit time. So type of sprinkler is selected related to operating pressure. What is the operating pressure available? Which type of pump it is used? What is nozzle discharge from the irrigation? And sprinkler spacing, how much area it can cover as a radius? So that defines spacing between two sprinklers. So all these we are deciding based on the sprinkler characteristics. After determining application rate, that is Q previously, sprinkler spacing along the laterals and spacing of the laterals is calculated. So simply Q is the discharge from the individual sprinkler that is again in liter per second. Capital Q is the total capacity. We have a lateral and suppose n number of sprinklers are fitted at equal interval, right? So we need to find out what is the discharge of individual sprinkler to make Q is equal to summation of Q. So individual sprinkler that is spaced along with the lateral, what is spacing between two laterals and what is spacing between two sprinklers if we have. So this is SI is individual sprinkler spacing along the lateral in a simple lateral and SM is given a sprinkler spacing between sorry a sprinkler is SM and SI is lateral spacing. I is infiltration rate what we have defined or what we have assumed most probable for our condition that is I divided by 360. So it's in meter spacing between laterals and spacing between sprinklers is in meter. Infiltration rate is in centimeter per hour. And if you are trying to find out the discharge of individual sprinkler in liters per second, this is a multiplier that is generated. That is 360. So SI, SMI divided by 360 will give us discharge of sprinkler, individual sprinkler in liters per second. So now we can find out in that way, check whether this is all good for the capacity of the sprinkler system. Now to design or to find out what size of a sprinkler in terms of nozzle specification, we need to go and buy. Theoretically as well, we are aware about the size and discharge capacity of individual sprinkler by orifice formula. So in designing discharge efficiency from an individual sprinkler, pattern efficiency should be taken into consideration that is later on and this discharge of individual sprinkler based on the orifice condition it is simply estimated by using area of the sprinkler nozzle c is basically coefficient of discharge of a sprinkler nozzle and root 2 gs that is theoretical you have already learned in orifice so in that way if we know the coefficient of discharge of a sprinkler, we know the size of opening of the nozzle of that sprinkler, we can find out what will be the capacity. So we can match here the capacity of the sprinkler or we can find out what size of say diameter of the sprinkler nozzle opening we should select to have this amount of discharge. That is here suppose we are giving and it is operated at a particular head condition that is it H. You have already means uh, getting an idea that we are using a pump to operate the system at a particular head condition. So we have 
head measurement there we can in that way find out what diameter of sprinkler nozzle we should select to apply q amount of water usually coefficient of discharge for sprinkler is in between 0.8 to 0.95 now we need to design the laterals how the system is i have shown you if you recall there is a pump source of water it is supplying to the main this is suppose main and from main we have laterals suppose here it is big field and in each lateral or say if you want to go exactly the nomenclature main line sub main line and then suppose it's a lateral here so we have lateral both side uh, here we can have so it is lateral and in each lateral it is fitted the sprinkler here everywhere so let me remove this to avoid any confusion for you and here again we have so it is covering suppose in this way this is the field size so what is the problem here we are designing in the process of designing the laterals what size of lateral it should be so that it is operating the sprinklers at a certain required pressure so we again can calculate the pressure that should be generated by this pump because sprinklers are operated at a certain pressure suppose 2.5 kg per centimeter square certainly pressure in the lateral will be last so it should be more pressure at this means means to sub main and from sub main to the lateral and there will be some loss in main as well and this supply pipeline and if you have number of arrangements like fertilizer arrangement filtering units valves bands etc so we need to calculate the total amount of head loss due to friction due to pipe fittings due to any other arrangement to find out that what size of pump it should be so that at the sprinkler head a certain required head is available to operate this so we are calculating back so designing the laterals rate of flow is calculated and a trial diameter is first selected of these laterals then mains and sub mains then mains and then pump condition so frictional loss in lateral is calculated by scovis formula this is new formula you have learned darcy this back formula that can as well used here but this is another formula which is used to calculate the friction loss in lateral so that is simply ks l q to the power 1.9 this is standard condition for sprinklers for drip it is a little change d is the diameter of the pipe size and this is a factor that is multiplier to find out head loss in terms of simply meter it will be more clear when you are solving just one problem or seeing one problem how we can design this what i have here so design of this is laterals this is design of main line so main line diameter is selected selected taking into consideration the rate of flow and frictional loss here we have already means decided for laterals then for sub main then main and larger the you know this condition larger the pipe size lesser will be the frictional loss but cost of the pipe will increase so we need to find out a particular size which is better in both the condition to save some head because of loss and as well as to save the cost in terms of material so we need to take care about material as well as the size and that's why it is important to find out a particular size of the pipe which supplies water at required pressure condition in minimum cost involved and minimum loss of energy then selection of pump 
we need to find out what is the total head because sprinklers are operated at a certain pressure condition or head required. So head required at this particular point, head of the riser, head last in laterals, head last in submains, head last in mains, and head last in pumping the water, suction side and delivery side. So all these heads are combined to find out the pump size, which is operated at a certain condition to generate that required head to operate this sprinkler. So it's basically the total head we are estimating. And the total head is just for an example, HN, that is maximum head required at the main to operate the sprinkler main line. HFT is the total friction loss in main and suction line. This is main line and suction line from the source of water suction line, including couplings and other fittings in the pipe. Then HJ is the elevation difference between the pump and the junction of lateral and the main because that is the matter of head loss, means loss of head because of gravity and HS is the suction head here. So that is the total pump size should be decided based on the total head that is required to operate the system. That makes an idea to select the pump size and the power unit. Now, general consider consideration for layout, what I told earlier, you have learned that it is, suppose for an example, fully portable system, portable sprinkler system. So this is every set which is moving from one place to another place. And we have a water supply everywhere we have hydrant. Simply we need to connect to this lateral to apply the water through a sprinkler system. So it is fully portable system. Sprinklers could be up say center permanent main line. We have up to here. We have four lines and it is supplying. So it is partial portable condition. Then rectangular field if we have, we can have main line. We have lateral lines or say simply here from here it is main. We have lateral and so on. So simple idea is you need to decide whether it should be a kind of fixed condition. Suppose from the center we are putting a main line here. Pump is somewhere here. So from here to here it is main line. And now we are putting laterals at certain length or distance to cover this field according to the irrigation frequency. And from these laterals we can have are the from these mains, this main, we can have sub mains and laterals and then sprinklers we can fit it, fit there. So it's a general consideration of layout, whether it is a fixed system, whether it's portable system and in which way we are arranging the sprinklers to supply the water or simply to irrigate the field. That is general idea and that depends on local condition. What type of soil? what type of source of water that is available, how much area we are going to cover. So if it is say very big area like one kilometer by one kilometer, certainly we need to have a portable system. But suppose it's just one or two hectare, we need not to go for portable system. Reason being that will be requiring more input in terms of fixed condition. We can simply have a connecting line to cover this whole one or two hectare line. So main line should be laid along the slope to avoid any head loss and lateral across the slope are nearly on the contours and in that way we can save a little bit head of the water. Reason being it is not going against the slope to lose the head of supply water. Now evaluation of a sprinkler system, water distribution pattern and average depth of application are observed. Water distribution pattern, suppose it's supplying in circular system. 
So simply, we are, once it is circular, if I told, you will uh, means immediately guess that it is a perfect circle. Reason being, it is from the center, it is applied. But there are certain conditions which changes its circular pattern, maybe in this way, or maybe in this way, depends on the cis wind which are blowing. So wind may affect the pattern of a sprinkler irrigation system. And in that way, it's a distribution pattern and average depth of application may get affected. Second question, suppose it is good pattern. So at what distance we should have sprinklers to have more efficiency of application here. So next may be here. In that way, this whole area at least it is irrigated means there is nothing area or no area. And if you are putting suppose in this way, so this area will not get any water. So generally up to 40 to 50 percent overlapping of coverage we allow to cover or to have uniformity in water application. So that is basically uniformity we need to maintain by overlapping of the sprinkler system up to 50%, but generally it is taken as 40% of overlapping. Suppose coverage radius is 10 meter, so we can have 40% overlap. So in that sense, from here six and another six. So that should be the condition so that it is covering in this way radius I am showing or you can have like this and here in this way so we can have a more uniform distribution of water here so 40 percent coverage we allow or overlapping we allow so a lateral with these sprinklers is selected and to find out this uniformity open canes are set in a grid pattern to find out what is the uniformity in terms of depth of water application? So we are evaluating a system, a sprinkler irrigation system, by putting canes or say simply beakers on the land surface to collect the water to find out the uniformity of the system. Suppose this is a sprinkler, we are putting canes here everywhere at a certain say distance, three meter, four meter, and measuring what is the depth or say simply volume of water it has been applied, we can find out what is the uniformity of this sprinkler irrigation system. Next is atmospheric factors in a sprinkler irrigation system should be taken into account. That is basically temperature, relative humidity and wind velocity that affects the evaporation losses. Wind distorts the application pattern. What I told earlier, suppose it is perfect thing because of wind from here, it may go like this means this side there is no water, but right side it is more water or more area is covered. So wind distorts the application pattern. To improve the windy condition, sprinkler laterals may be moved only one half the normal spacing. Means because if we learn that it is wind in this direction, next sprinkler should be rather than putting here, we can shift somewhere here or shift right side to cover better in terms of area coverage to equal application of water. Or irrigation at night time, we should allow our sprinkler, sprinkler should be means uh, operated in night time when wind velocities are low to avoid the loss of water, have better uniformity of the sprinkler irrigation system. Then comes moisture distribution pattern and uniformity of coverage. Efficiency of sprinklers depend on degree of uniformity of water application means it is uniform everywhere in the field. It is not like this, this application means in terms of depth we are talking everywhere it should be the same depth of water application. So water spray distribution characteristics of sprinklers 
and their spacing regulate the uniformity of application or water application. Spray distribution characteristics varies with nozzle size and that's why we need to decide what size of nozzle it should be so that it is more uniform condition. So it's spray distribution characteristics varies with nozzle size and operating pressure. Suppose it's a high operating pressure than the required. Suppose the system is asking to run at 2.5 kg per centimeter square and suppose we are running at 4 kg per centimeter. What will happen? It will miss the coming out jet simply and its coverage and uniformity will get deteriorated. So a spray distribution characteristics varies with nozzle size because of that and operating pressure. So always we need to take care about operating pressure. Suppose it is rated for 2.5, it should not run more than just 10% variation system, not more than say 3 or even 2.75 kg per centimeter square because otherwise it will change the uniformity of the system. Wetted circle of adjacent sprinklers should be overlapping so as to add water to areas of adjoining sprinkler that is basically overlapping of the system. We need to decide what overlapping it should be. Generally 40% to 50% we are allowing or in excess cases it is 60% as well overlapping. Now moisture distribution pattern and uniformity of coverage. Aggregate depth means we have put here the canes if you recall to find out the uniformity of the system. Average depth of distribution obtained by overlapping becomes nearly uniform. Means if system is uniform, it is almost uniform distribution of water. Water distribution pattern is tested using a set of, of catch cans around the sprinkler, what I showed, and the water received in cans in measured in terms of depth or in terms of volume and also the pressure discharge rate are observed. What is the pressure system is operated to measure this condition? What is the operating pressure and what is the rate of discharge of individual sprinkler or whole system? We need to observe, observe in that sense. Now, this is most distribution pattern and uniformity coverage. This is the simple example. This is supposed to be have, but because of wind direction, this could be an elliptical pattern of coverage. So it is width of coverage is reduced. And now if we have overlapping in such a way that it is covering theoretically this whole field and because of wind, it will not cover. That will change the uniformity pattern simply in this way. We are supposed to have system like this, but this could be because of wind, lateral wind condition. It will be this particular area will not get any water and its efficiency or uniformity will get reduced. This is simple pattern. We need to find out the pattern by using catch cans. What is the pattern of a sprinkler system in terms of depth of application? So this, once we have observed through catch cans, fitting catch cans or putting catch cans at a certain interval, forming a grid like say three meter by three meter grid, we are putting cans to collect the water from a sprinkler that is operated at a certain pressure condition to find out uniformity of the system. Uniformity we are usually measuring in this way. This uniformity coefficient measure the degree of uniformity. This is affected by pressure and nozzle size, what we have learned, a sprinkler spacing and wind condition. Computed using water depth observations in catch cans, means we have number of catch cans and it is observed. So for the sprinkler system, uniformity coefficient 85% or more is considered to be satisfactory. And how it is calculated coefficient uniformity 
that is simply 1 minus summation of deviation from the mean of depth of water that is applied. So delta x is for all the points numerical deviation of individual observations from the average application rate and m is the average of all observations and n is the number of observation that is means simply summation of all application. So m is the average, n is the number of observations and xi summation of xi is the deviation from mean m of individual observation that is numerical value means no sign is involved or say simply mod and from 1 minus means efficiency that is excess. So this is uniformity coefficient how we can and what about the distribution pattern? What is the distribution pattern? So pattern efficiency or distribution efficiency is simply minimum depth of application because you have n number of observations in these cash cans. So minimum depth divided by average depth and this minimum depth is not just one observation it's a minimum but it's a basically one fourth of the water depth in cans are lowest one fourth observations average of lowest one fourth observations is simply called the minimum depth of application so suppose we have 50 cans in observation one fourth means 2.5 so simply 13 lowest observations average is taken as minimum depth of application divided by average depth of application all average of all 50 into 100 that gives us the distribution efficiency of the system. Now if you have any query anywhere students all are gone or what anybody there sir, sir. Yes, no sir. query sir. no query very good very good awesome okay so now let us clear these learnings based on the problems this is simple problem determine the required capacity of a sprinkler system to apply water at the rate 1.25 centimeter per hour right that is infiltration or somehow it has decided that 1.25 centimeter per hour should be the sprinkler water application rate two 86 meter long sprinkler lines like this are required to cover the field 16 sprinklers are placed at 12 meter interval in each lines so 186 meter length and distance between each of the sprinkler is 12 meter so 186 divided by 12 how much so it is 16 sprinklers that's why so one will be at the last here so 16 sprinklers are put in each of the line to cover this whole area oh, sorry uh, at 12 meter interval to cover this whole area the spacing between line is means two line is 18 meter so what we need to find determine the required capacity of a sprinkler system what should be the capacity of the sprinkler system that we need to find out here it is simple individual sprinklers first capacity what is the sprinklers capacity that is simply distance between laterals distance between sprinklers irrigation rate or infiltration rate divided by 360 we have means already learned this so in that way we have 12 meter interval sprinklers 18 meter spacing between laterals and application rate is 1.25 that gives us an idea 0.75 liters per second per sprinkler this is a sprinkler so what will be the system capacity q we have total number of how many sprinklers two lines are operated 
each has 16 sprinklers. So there are total 32 sprinklers here and individual sprinklers gives a charge 0.75. So it will be total 24 liters per second should be the capacity of the system. Means it should operate in such a way that 24 liter per second of irrigation is applied. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So let us make this problem further. Problem two, allowing one hour of one hour for moving each these two. Now these are arranged in such a way that these two requires to move just like to cover this whole field. Suppose in this way it is main. So these two lines are covering this and another this. So from first set it is going to next set and allowing one hour for moving each 186 meter sprinkler line described in previous problem. How many hours would be required to apply 5 centimeter irrigation? Means application rate is 1.25. Remember here, here 1.25 centimeter per hour. But this is the required depth of irrigation. So required to apply 5 centimeter irrigation to a square area or field of 16 hectare. So total area is that is in a square in shape. 16 hectare means it is 400 meter by 400 meter. How many days are required? Assuming 10 hours day are 10 hours are 10 hour days means system is operated 10 hours every day. So how many days will it require to cover this 16 hectare area? Let me show you irrigation time to apply 5 centimeter irrigation at the rate of 1.25 centimeter per hour what we have learned previously. If it is 1.25 centimeter per hour here recall this application rate is 1.25 centimeter per hour. So how much time it will take to apply 5 centimeter because now irrigation requirement is 5 centimeter. It requires 4 hours to apply 5 centimeter depth of irrigation when it is giving output as 1.25 centimeter per hour. And now time required to move the lateral that is one hour for each set. So total time per setting that is five hours. And this is 186 and 186. That is covering this 186, 186 and some area it is covered by the sprinkler this side as well as this side. So area is something like here. So this is near about 200 meters. It is covered by each of the laterals. So 200 into 200 that is 400 it has covered and this side as well it is 400. So it is two set or one change is required to cover this whole area. So total time per setting is five hours. Area of the field is 16 are 16 hectare. So length and width both are 400 meter. Entire length 400 meter may be covered by two 186 laterals in the series condition. Number of moves required because it's 18 meter it is covered. Sorry, sorry, here I did mistake. It is not covering 400 meter and it is covering 18 meter in each move. So 400 meter in this way, 400 meter, one is one setting is covering 18 meter. So how many moves are required? This is 400 meter divided by 18. So total moves required, maybe 22.2 it is coming. So we can say 22 moves will cover this 400 meter length of the field 22 moves so total time required to irrigate because in one irrigation it requires five hour so 22 moves that is 110 hours 
and every day we are operating system for 10 hours so it is total requirement is 11 days to cover this field now it is clear from the design condition frequency of operation so now we can say frequency of operation cannot be more than 11 means after 11th day it is again coming to the field one so we need to apply water in such a way that once we have applied water it is running for at least 11 days without any water requirement now this is about the testing of the sprinkler system but uh, two questions are important questions are there so i will teach you in next or explain you in next and next will be after that it will be drip irrigation system which is again a means long class to cover the whole condition of learning drip irrigation system if you have any query anybody no no sir no query okay that's good okay if no query then you may have another class you have another class or should we continue students we do have another class a lot uh, of us have a slot filled out that, that is most important so move and uh, best day we will talk about uh, to finish the sprinkler irrigation and drip irrigation as well i will try to finish that okay Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. See you, see you on best, baby. Thank, Thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir.